Hello, hello, my name is Pablo. This over here is Jira. Today we're gonna to do a tutorial on refraction. Refraction is basically uh, when you're looking at something through a transparent surface, you basically see like a distorted version of whatever is behind it. So if you're looking like at a, a cup of wine, you'll see through it and the world behind it will be visible, but it'll be changed in a way. And that's the refraction of the glass. So refraction basically means that uh, as the light is passing through a surface, it gets kind of deformed and changed to look different to you. So in this case, for example, for the pencil, we can see anything that's in water gets refracted so the the light kind of bends and then it looks like it's a little thicker and a little more to the right so this this is the type of thing that we're gonna do making the actual calculations for actual refraction is actually very complicated uh, so in video games we actually don't do that generally what we do is fake so the way we fake it is um, we use what's called screen based refractions which is basically grabbing whatever's already drawn in the screen behind you and then deforming it in some way and showing it but the problem with that is it does have some limitations. For example, in this um, little sphere, you can see there's these trees here that are not in the scene. So if you imagine this is your screen, those trees are not rendered. So we cannot use uh, screen-based refractions to show things like that. But we can do examples like the pencil. And in most cases, if you make it, you know, with a little bit of blur and, you know, there's just like a shape in there, it looks real enough that it, you can sell the effect without it being like completely accurate in terms of uh, like what a lens would do exactly. We're going to start from this scene. Basically, what we have here is a bunch of crystals that right now just have a plain a plain material with nothing in it and then behind we'll have this treasure if we do this right later on it will look like the treasure is being seen through a crystal and actually deformed and stuff so the first thing you need to do is to get access to whatever has already been rendered on the opaque pass we gotta go into edit project settings and then over here under graphics you'll find your um, your render pipeline asset you can right click it go to properties and then you'll have here opaque texture and this opaque texture basically is whatever was drawn during the opaque pass so turn that on over here uh, it lets you down sample it uh, you can say no down sample it and that basically means that it's gonna keep it one to one or if you want to down sample it means it's gonna scale it down so it's just gonna make it small we're gonna leave it at 2x by linear which is just a little smaller just because it's gonna make it easier for us to see when we're using uh, the opaque texture versus when we're just looking at the regular level so this is going to help us a little bit just in the testing. But later on, you can change it if you want to. Uh, back in our project, we can right click, create, and then shade a graph, uh, URP. And then we can do lit or unlit. I'm just going to do it lit for now, but it doesn't really matter. And then over here, we're going to call it refraction. Uh, we open our, our shader here. Right now, it doesn't do anything. So let's just change the color to like a red. Save it. And then let's go back here and we have our glass material here which is the one that's being used by that so we can just do properties and over here we can change the shader to shader graphs and then we have refraction over here and this will become red just so that we know that this is the material we're using uh, okay so now we're gonna grab the actual uh, color from the scene and for that we just go to scene color and then we can hook this up here uh, if you save right now this will be a mess so obviously it's not working so you gotta come back into your graph go into graph settings and over here under universal you can select the surface type to be transparent and the main reason for that is the scene color if uh, is reading that opaque texture that we turned on earlier and that opaque texture only exists after all the opaque has been uh, rendered so we gotta be in the transparent pass which is done a step after that so after saving now you can see we're transparent and you can see behind it but we're actually not looking exactly behind it what we're seeing here is actually the the depth path so you can see it's a little more pixelated than the rest uh, to make it easier to see let's go back to our assets so we can go again project settings and over here right click properties and then um let me make this big so you can see it if i change this to 4x you can see it gets even more pixelated look how many how pixelated it is so actually this is not rendering what's actually behind what's actually uh, grabbing is from that texture that is the final texture from the opaque pass so if i go none you can see now it looks super crisp because it's not scaling it anymore so let's leave it at a 2x for now i, I kind of like 2x because it gives you like a, it's smaller so it consumes less memory in your gpu uh, also the the sampling is a little faster because again it's smaller 
uh, and also it gives you kind of like a little bit of a free blur which if you're going to be using this a lot for like crystals or water or things like that you know generally you want a little bit of blur so it's not bad to have like a little bit already baked in the fact that the texture is like a little bit uh, lower res. So over here you can see it's taking a UB4 and that actually uh, what it takes as a default value here is called a screen position. So if you take this note here which uh, is telling you the, the position of the screen and the position of the screen is literally just like X and Y of where it is on the screen. If you hook this up directly here you'll see there's actually no change. So basically you end up with the exact same result. But if we uh, modify it a little bit so for example we can add to it um, we grab this and then we hook up over here and then let's add for example create node add time and then let's grab this sand time and multiply this this is just for a demo we don't actually need this but I think it'll help with uh, explaining a little bit of what's happening so basically as time passes we're gonna do a sine wave which is up and down from minus 1 to 1 we're gonna multiply by 0.1 because we don't want to move it that much uh, and then instead of passing the seed cream position, we're gonna pass that in here. You can see now it's kind of moving uh, in a diagonal up and down. So it looks like the glass is kind of looking at different parts of the room. In reality, all it's doing is like panning that little texture. Uh, but you can already start seeing a little bit of the um, the downsides of screen-based refraction. So this stretch line is basically is because it's sampling the texture once the screen is over. Essentially, this is the bottom of the screen. So since we're using the, the screen-based refraction, we only have basically from here to here to work with, right? We have whatever's painted there. So if we try to sample outside the screen, basically this is what happens. Uh, our screen is finishing here and then we have a whole bunch of things. So you gotta be careful how much into the edges you're gonna go when you're trying to use uh, any sort of thing like screen burst refraction or screen burst reflections, either one. Okay, so let's undo that because this part was just for just for fun. We're just gonna keep this note here and we'll do some stuff with it soon. We're actually gonna do proper uh, refraction uh, calculations, which actually Unity already has a way to do, but it doesn't have a note. So if you look here, unfortunately, there is no note for refract, but there is a function. So what you can actually do is use what's called a custom function. A uh, custom function allows you to put a shader code directly into a node so that you can access a bit more powerful stuff. So we're gonna do it here. So basically under the type, you can go to a file, but in this case, it's such a short amount of code that I'm just gonna change it to a string. Uh, let's name this function into refract. And then down here, let's put that. Um, we gotta put our inputs and our outputs. So we're gonna need three things to go in. Our view vector, which is where is the camera looking from. Our normal, which is the normal of the thing we're trying to render. So basically each one of the faces would have a different normal. And last is the what's called the index of refraction. And the index of refraction will basically kind of determine just how strong the, the deformations are from the refraction. So uh, let's start with that. Let's go over here. Uh, we gotta declare, this is our, this is our vector. So vector and then this is going to be view then another one and this is going to be a normal and again this is a vector tree uh, and last but not least this is a float and this is index of refraction generally I'll, you'll see it as uh, called ir in a lot of places and this is, will be our result and i'm just going to call it result because why not you know that's a nice name uh, and our result is also going to be a vector tree and then now here we're going to say um, result equals uh, refract and then we're going to pass view normal and ior then we got um, and basically now our node kind of works i know it seems weird that it will work but uh, just you gotta you gotta trust me for that we're gonna have to take a bit of a leap of faith for a little bit so to get the view we're gonna go here and then we can just do literally view view direction is what we need and it's this one and we want it to be in world coordinates now the view direction uh it's, it's important to normalize it so you want to normalize it normalize it basically is just changing any vector into a vector of unit one and that's important for a lot of operations so you should do it here so we normalize that then we want the normal over here so right click create node we look for normal and this is the normal vector and same story we over here grab this one and we do um, another normalize 
Um, no, a lot of the times um, meshes already come with normalized normals. <laughs> the normalized normals, but not always so, you know, it's safer to, to do it. And last but not least, for our index of reflection, we're going to create a little float. So over here, I'm going to create this one, IOR. Uh, the index of reflection will be a float, and then you should change it to a slider. Uh, I found that uh, a range that works well for me is minus 0.25 to 1. That's a good range. You'll see that it flips it in, um, in the max, but we'll check that in a moment. i drop the IOR over here. Uh, the default we put right now is zero, which at zero will do nothing. So maybe let's change it to like a minus 0.15, just so that we can see something happening. Uh, once we did that, we actually, if you look at the inputs that we're putting here, the view direction is in world, the normal vector is in world, but our coordinates for this stuff, for the, the texture of the opaque, those are flat uh, coordinates that are on like our screen. So we actually need to convert these coordinates into from world space into tangent space. So for that, we grab this and then we look for transform. Uh, and transform can actually give you like a lot of variations. So for example, here we want to go from world coordinates to tangent coordinates and the type we already know you can see it here view direction and normal vector is also a direction so we're going to change this type to direction so let me move this a little bit further up here we have our add here so we can just drag it in and save and let's see how that looks uh, so you can see in the preview basically now each one of the faces deforms differently like there you were seeing this little chest uh, now this here is actually this chest but as you can see it's kind of compressed and that's sort of the effects that you get from the refract and the reason that each face looks different is because each face has a different normal vector right so this normal vector would be pointing like out into the screen this one would point to the side this one pointed to the side and because those are different you end up with different results and it gives you that sort of crystal look uh, and now in here we can actually tweak this uh, index of reflection this will be how strong the, the index is so for example if we go back to zero you see it's flat you know nothing is changing if we start changing it slowly you can see it start going stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and if we go up you'll start to see that at a certain point it kind of starts to flip it you know there was like a little bit of an inversion there um, and it can go pretty crazy as you can see now this goes pretty insane um, i generally like to keep it in kind of lowish values and i generally prefer the negative values um, but you know you can experiment with um what works best for your project. So this is kind of nice because you're seeing this one here so and this one here, so this kind of gives you a very nice side to side. So as I was saying earlier, basically the reason it deforms different between them is because of their normal vectors. So if we put something that only has one normal vector, such as a plane, uh, the effect doesn't do that well. So let's do that now. So as you can see now, the plane is kind of splitting the room, but it doesn't look particularly special because all across its surface, since the normal is the same, the, the formation that it does is exactly the same all across. So for that, what we can actually use is instead of only using the normal vector, we can also use the normal texture. So back in our shader, we can define over here, create node, and then we do a sample texture 2D. We're going to change it from um, default into normal. And then over here, we open and we say uh, texture. This is a texture asset. Um, and then uh, convert to property. And we can call this uh, normal. And then in here, we can change the mode into normal map so that we know that it is a normal map. Um, also, we're going to want to influence how strong it is. So let's also add a little float here. Let's call it a normal strength. Um, and I like changing anything that I make a strength. I generally make it a slider and I just go from zero to one. And then in here, we're just going to grab this bad boy. I'm going to multiply it. And we're going to need one more add. So let's go add and instead of connecting this here we're actually going to connect this here and then this one goes here so as you can see nothing much has happened because this right now is empty and the normal strength is zero so if we go and select here for example this a lunar texture that's a normal you don't see anything as soon as we start increasing the strength of this you can see now the normal map of this starts deforming and you can get some pretty cool effects now for 
for this wall obviously you know that was pretty strong but you know up to you how what look you're going for so as you can see you can get very different effects with the normals and again you can go as strong or as soft as you want with them i think that gives a pretty nice effect uh, and this is basically this helps so that flat surfaces don't look exactly the same but this also really helps the crystal so let's go back to that one so you can see now with the effect of the normal you can get some pretty crazy effects it can get kind of noisy when you see it there but you know this looks really nice i think this looks kind of like a kind of almost a little, little bit like frosted glass so that's about it as you saw it's a pretty cool effect it's not very hard to do uh, and you can use it for all sorts of things you know uh, glass like i was saying you know the, those sorts of crystals you can use it a lot of times for like a, a barrier i've done it for like magical barriers and stuff like that it looks pretty cool um and you can make many variations by using things like I showed you with a normal. You also don't have to use exactly a normal map. You can also use a uh, black and white texture and then just turn that. There's a node in Shader Graph that you can turn a height map into a normal map. So you can use that to derive from there. You can use noise, you can all sorts of things. Um, so, you know, try it out, play around with it and see what you come up with. I uh, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Leave me a comment, a little hi, tell me how you're doing, what are your Christmas plans? Okay, maybe don't tell me about that. Um, and if you ever want to see more of me, I stream on Twitch on Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays. I'll be there. This was recorded right there. I uh, hope to see you there. Hope you have a great time. Take care of yourselves. Adios. Well, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.